Ladies and gentlemen, bonjour. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Hello, everyone. Two years ago, many of you were in Dakar, in Senegal. And many of you wanted to collaborate, at least to initiate collaboration. Two years later, we are here in Kigali. How many of you are still interested in collaborating? So game theory address these challenges tells you how we can make the collaboration happen. How can we collaborate? That is the question, and that's the challenge. The Pan-African Competitive Game Theory is one of the approaches we are developing to address those challenges, because there are challenges we have, for example, multiple objectives. Objective about education, about water, about energy, about environment, about transportation. Those objectives are not necessarily aligned. And that's why we have challenges to address them. That is the question, and the, we want strategies that can make this collaboration possible. If you look at Africa, the continent, we are not alone, we are interconnected. A few years ago, if you were in some villages in Africa, if you had a chance to stop by, there were no cell phones at all. Nowadays, they are having smarter phones, those that are able to connect to the Internet. They can recognize your picture and so on. So we are getting more and more interconnected. This can be viewed as a network of decision-making players. The decision made by one person in this audience will propagate and affect at least a subset of other people in the audience in the city here, within the country, within the continent, and all across the world. The information flow that we are generating in this audience, you could see on the social networks. We affect others. What can we expect from this? Can we expect a collaborative effort toward picking the best decision? Our joint effort to pick the best decision. Is that possible? Game theory has several branches, and one of them is non-cooperative game theory. If you look at the dots, these countries, inside you have institutions, and then you have companies, and you have people. If they act selfishly, or they are optimizing for their own interest, we call it competitive game theory. The outcome could be dramatic if you don't design very well these objectives. It could be a situation where the more competitive ones grow faster and the less competitive ones are trained down. Some of them are going to disappear. This is the wrong model. We don't want that. 
what we want could be, for example, a full cooperation among the countries. Then you see all the interconnections between those nations. This is too ideal because it has to be perfect knowledge, perfect information across all the countries and the interconnections between them. The third approach, what we are proposing here, is about co-petition. What does it mean? It's not about non-cooperation. It is not about pure cooperation. It is about working together, it is about co-learning, it is about competitive cooperation, it is about cooperative competition. So I draw a baobab tree here, so that you see that there are more interconnections, and the baobab tree is across all Africa. We want to be in the middle. We don't want full cooperation, although we, it's an ideal solution. We don't want pure competition. We want to learn together, to evolve together, and game theory is developing such approaches to reach the solution concept. Control, regulation, voluntary contributions, learning, incentives, and so on, so that the countries can work together, co-learn for the co-development, and they reach the final outcome, and they co-evolve with other countries and with the rest of the world. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Professor Tembine.